All right, in this video, we are going to look at the anchor global variable, and this video is probably going to be broken up into a couple of different ones because it's going to take a while to show you all these different pieces. Uh, we're also going to look at the number global variable. We're going to look at the list global variable some more. We're going to look at uh, various uses of number or the number global variable. Uh, what else we're going to look at? Like I said, anchor, um, background, so many things are coming up. I got a request to cover a lot of these global variables. And actually, um, what I've come up with, I think, uh, ties a lot of them in together. Uh, what you'll soon learn about KLWP is that, I mean, every global variable has so many uses. And I'm starting to realize that, realize that more and more and more because I'm getting requests from a lot of you, which keep them coming, that's fine. And uh, it's, you know, I'm going and I'm looking at them, I'm learning about them, and I'm like, wow, there's just so much you can really do with this stuff. But nonetheless, here we go. So when you looked at uh, the beginning of this video, maybe you saw this stuff up here. And this is a problem that I've ran into. Uh, the problem I've ran into before with uh, items, and I have a background, is that this particular item might be hard to see. Um, this is not tied to anchor, but now, you know, I have some shapes Notice that popped in a lot better. Notice these shapes, uh, the colors kind of look nice with the background that I have here. Well, let me show you another image. Check out that image. Does it look a little bit different? How about now? Did the colors change a little bit? Looks like it. How about another image? How about now? That doesn't look too good, does it? Well, how about... Now, a little bit better, right? How about now? See that? I haven't even messed with the anchor yet. The only thing I'm really messing with here are just some alpha values on my rectangles. But suppose I don't like the way that looks there. Well, how about this? See how it got shifted down? It's kind of hard to see the time, but if we adjust the alpha, bam. And you see how this is quickly changing the look of this entire wallpaper? Um, not only that, but we can even bump this stuff around to even put it somewhere else. How about right there? Um, let's bump the alpha down a little bit. And see, now it's kind of hard to see the now if I take it away like that. There you go. See, there's so many things we can do. And now the stuff that I'm doing here, it is using my anchor, um, though you haven't even seen me use the anchor global variable yet. The only thing I've really been using is this list. Um, I've used this list. These are two different lists. One of them deals with a type of anchor. This list here deals with uh, whether I'm pulling vibrant or muted colors from the background. I have all this stuff coded to where when I start uh, sliding things around, you know, that's sliding around. Notice the rectangles are moving together. Uh, notice that one's moving right. And what else? Oh, yeah, we can even adjust the width of this thing to put it way over here. Um, we can adjust the height of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on here. And the reason why I like this, this is one good thing I can think about the anchor. Uh, you have your stuff set up, but when you add a new background, it may be hard to see the particular items. Like this one here is still kind of hard to see. I could easily go in and tweak the coding of my colors to make them show up better. But uh, most of the time, um, uh, let me pick something that's a little bit nicer to work with. So now I'm back to this one, the one I think I started the video off on. But, uh, you know, now it I do like that vibrant muted thing. I mean, here's vibrant. Like it's picking up colors from this thing back here. Whereas if I go to muted, um, it is, you know, picking up different colors. I don't understand exactly vibrant and muted, but it definitely does blend in nicely. Um, but that's another whole other part of some things that I'll be showing you here. Um, I can bump this back down. Or if I want this stuff to move over, I can change this little anchor that I have set up. Bam, I've shot it over here. Maybe I want to move this clock up. So I need to move. Bam, check it out. Kind of hard to see it. Maybe it's, maybe you don't like the look of that. Then we can come in here and change this. And, you know, there you go. It's, it's starting to already look better. Maybe, maybe not. That's a, you're calling that. I can just shoot it over there. I like that. That works for me. Now. Other things in here. Here is a true anchor global variable. Now, this list that I have right here, that's this one right here, these are anchor points, so to speak. Um, however, 
if I choose the anchor global variable, to my knowledge, when this is chosen, I mean, you've pretty much got all these options. I didn't want all these options for the certain things that I was doing with the wallpaper. However, this, I do have an anchor global variable set up, and let me show you where that one's set up. Um, if we look at this shape right here, and I'll make it a little bit bigger just for the purposes of showing you what's going on here. So I have like a, a date and a time. Now, I call this my main rectangle. Uh, main rectangle clock. Notice this shape here. Uh, the clock, this time, is in the bottom right. Well, suppose, and notice the rectangle is in the top right. Or not the rectangle, but notice the date is in the top right. If I change this to center left, that means the clock is going to be in the center left, and I have it coded so that the date is going to be in the center right. And then what I can do from there is I can actually come back in here now, adjust my rectangle, Maybe I want to move it around again. Let's move this bottom right, or let's move this uh, top left. Bam, see how it's down there? Maybe top right. And here's what I've realized. The good thing about this uh, anchor global variable um, is that you can move things real easily, and you can get that stuff situated to where it does look nice somewhere on your live wallpaper. Now, I like mine being above and below. So let me see. Let's do this at the bottom. It's going to move that up to the top. And now let me adjust the height a little bit. Boom. Let me adjust the width. There we go. All right. So, like I said, this is going to be broken up into a series of videos. What I want to show you first is the anchor global variable. And that's going to be, it's going to be some coding long codes, not crazy codes, but long because when you have all these options for anchor, you're going. if you want something else to move when you change the anchor of something else, you're going to have to do something for each one of these pieces uh, to prevent overlapping or to, to get the look that you want to get. So let's have a look at that first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a blank preset like I pretty much always do when I make these things. And... And we'll create a text file. So let's start by creating an overlap group. And inside of this overlap group, I'm going to add a shape. And I'll just use a rectangle for right now. And I'm going to actually probably save this particular um, piece that I'm making here and I'll keep adding on to it as I make more videos that cover all these different things because there's a lot to look at here it really is and let's add some text I'm just gonna add some the times already there paint I'm gonna change it to a dark color I'm not messing with the colors too much in this video I just want to go over some things about anchor I don't want the seconds All right, and let's just bump up the size a little bit. There we go. All right. Now, I want to go ahead and establish a global variable for this time. So to do that, I'm going to go back. I'm going to establish the an anchor, and it's going to be anchored somewhere inside of here. So I'm going to go to globals. I'm going to add anchor mode, and let's call this uh, time because that's what I'm truly anchoring. Um, I'm anchoring this time somewhere, and I'll go ahead and set it to top. It doesn't matter. But let's go back to the items. Let's go to that time. Let's go to its position, and let's establish that global variable on that. Now, everything else, notice it did go to the top. So if I go back to my globals now, and if I set this to center right, notice it's going to be in the center right of that overlap group. If I put it in bottom left, it's going to be in the bottom left of that overlap group. So th that's set. Now, if I put something else inside of here, or if you just want to code it to whatever else, you can code this to whatever else you want. I'm just going to copy and paste. Now, I'm, I have two times on top of each other, but I'm going to change this one to a date. And let's just roll with uh, this one right here. Whoops, let me hold it down. I can replace everything. And I don't want the years. I just say, okay, it's the 10th of February. Good. All right, now it's overlapping on top of that because I copied and pasted that text. 
but I don't want that to use that global variable. I don't want the date to be in the same spot as where you know the, the time is anchored. I would actually like to maybe have them in opposites or maybe right above and below each other. Uh, what have you. I'm going to roll with um, something like this. Okay, let me take away this global variable and let's get to coding. All right, now remember that global variable we called it time. So, and that was set to an anchor. The anchors are top left, top, top right, center left, center, center right, bottom left, bottom, bottom right. We have to tell that date because now we are anchoring the date. I'm inside of my date and I'm adjusting its position. I'm going to adjust it based on where the time is anchored. So, I'm going to say if GV time is equal to let's just go right across the list okay if we have the time anchored in the top left then I want the date to be in the bottom left now with the new updates to KLWP I think we'll be okay with leaving a space there I'll double check that in a second but with the new updates to KLWP I can just keep on nesting this thing I can nest all these if statements so if GV time equals top left I want my date to be in the bottom left. And that's how the rest of these are going to be worded. So keep on going. It's GV time. I don't have to do it if now with this new update. GV time is equal to, what's the next thing? Top. Then I want my date to be at the bottom. GV time is at the top right. So it equals top right. Then I want to be at the bottom right. All right, GV time. So I'll just do there. Top right. Okay, how about center left? Center, I got to do equals, equals center left. Then I want to be uh, center right. All right. GV time, center. Okay, this is the weird one. So if the time is in the center, where do you want the date to be? You can put it top, bottom, whatever you want. I'm just going to put it at the bottom. All right, if it's at the center right. Then we want to be center left for our date. How about bottom left? Then we want to be bottom right. Bottom. So bottom equals the bottom. Then I want my date to be at the top. And we're almost done. bottom right I want to be at the top right now did I mess up anywhere <laughs> good question okay so top left bottom left if I'm at the top I want to be at the bottom if I'm at the top right I want to be at the bottom right if I'm at center left I want to be center right if I'm at the center bottom center right center left bottom left bottom okay this one right here bottom left I want to be at the top left And I think everything else, bottom left, top left, bottom top, bottom right, top right, I think everything else is good. So let's copy and let's paste this in here and let's see if it's going to like this code. Check. Let's see. Okay. Right now it looks pretty good. Let's go to the globals. So remember, time. If time is at the bottom left, let's go ahead and let's look at our code. If time, here we go. If the time is equal to the bottom left, then I want my date to be in the top left because that's where I just copied this code into. I copied that code into the position for the date. Okay, well, let's go through the code and make sure everything works. If my time is in the top left, then I want my date to be in the bottom left. So if my time is in the top left, see, my code's not working, dag nabbit. And it's probably because of the spaces. So what we're going to have to do here is go back to the date. I'm going to have to adjust this thing over here so it doesn't do the autocorrect. I guess you can't leave the spaces. That's what that is. So top left, bottom left, if it's equal to top, bottom, top right. Yeah, i got to take away all these spaces, I think. 
So I'm just coming in here, wherever I have spaces, and deleting them, making sure I don't delete any extra letters. Okay, probably if I delete this, it's gonna take away the end, so that one's good. I need to take away that space between center and left. That top and left have a, a space in it, not anymore. And now is this going to work the way I want it to? Check. Okay, I think that did fix it. So no spaces, even though I had spaces over here. Okay, so let's go back through it again. Fifth, top left, notice the times at the top left, I want my date to be at the bottom left. Very good. Now, if my time's at the top, I want my date to be at the bottom. So if my time is at the top, my date's at the bottom. If my time is in the top right, I want my date to be in the bottom right. So if my time's up here in the top right, I want my date to be right down here in the bottom right. Well, let's see what that does. Boom, boom. So I think everything's good now. I'm going to go ahead and go through all of them. Uh, center left, then I want to be center right. So center left, my date is center right. If I'm in the center, I set the date to be at the bottom right there. If the time is at the center, then I want my date to be at the bottom. Very good. If I'm at center right, I want to be center left for my date. Bottom left for my time, top left for my date. If I'm at the bottom for my time, my date at the top, everything's working nicely now. And if I'm at the bottom right here, then bam, I had that. And you might say, well, once I get this, I will never change it. <laughs> okay, you, we all know if you've been messing with KOWP long enough, you find one spot, you want to tweak it, and you have to go in and edit 30 different things to fix it. Well, this is what we're, we're getting into, or I know I'm getting into some more advanced stuff with KOWP where I'm trying to streamline it where I can change one thing and it actually changes other things at one time. And that's exactly what we have going on here. Um, this code can be applied to everything else. And if you're familiar with the coding in KOWP, you know you can go all over the place with these codes. You can put even more items in here. Um, I can imagine us having like four items in here and basically we could we could have them like, uh, cy not cycling, but if we had one here, we could shift the other one over here, shift one down here, shift one over here, and you could put them in whatever corner you want. By you doing the proper code and having one anchor, we could move as many things, um, we could move as many things around in here as we want. I'm just showing you two. So, um, you know, there you go. That's the first part. As you can see, we are, I don't know how long into the video, but um, that, that's the cool thing about the anchor global variable. Uh, we move one thing, we can move multiple things. And it's all about keeping them separated. So I'll look for part two sometime um, that will cover us adding the rectangles. Um, we'll be doing the coloring stuff. If you really want it, just let me know. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, one application of the anchor global variable. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.